Okay, one question that we commonly get is, do my pistons need an oil rail support? The easiest way to tell is, here is one that does not need one. The oil pin is close, but it does not intersect. This does not require an oil rail support. This piston, on the other hand, the pinhole obviously intersects the oil land, and this piston will require the use of an oil rail support. Okay, oil rail support is real simple. It comes overlapped. They're about 30 thousandths thick, and they have an anti-rotation detent. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but basically it's a, it's a dimple protruding outward. This always goes down. Down as in towards the wrist pin. Uh, what it does is when an oil rail support is installed, it supports the oil ring. Oil rings are a lot thinner than this. And what happens is if an oil rail does not have support, it can possibly fold in, catch the groove, and wind itself out. As it winds itself out, it will basically destroy your engine. Okay how to properly install oil rail supports. First thing I always do is make sure there's no burr on these little edges right here. You could use a deburr knife, a small file, a small screwdriver with a sharp edge, anything to just make sure there's no burr in the corners. Once that's done, that is done, this is oil rail support. Most companies oil rail supports have a small detent that's called an anti-rotation detent. That always goes down towards the opening between the oil rail and the wrist pin. What I do on all of these is I will lightly deburr with a very fine file. Just lightly deburr the edges. Since these are all mass produced by a company, you've got to take a little care in putting them together. Once that's done, with the detent going towards the bottom, you start with the gap in the middle of the piston. That will allow your detent to end up in the right place. I always use a small pair of pliers just so it doesn't scrape, scrape going down. There's your detent. Now, there's a couple things. These things always don't have the correct gap. Sometimes they overlap. What you're looking for is for the ring to clamp on the inside of the piston, like this one here. It doesn't move. It's gripping the inside here. So even though this has an overlap, what you do is take this, use a ring filer, a belt sander, or whatever you're comfortable with using. The end gap that you're looking for is anywhere from 20 to even a hundred thousandths is okay. The main thing is, is does the oil rail support grip on the inside? This one obviously does because it's not moving file it down, put it in, you're fine. Now sometimes you'll also have oil rail supports like this one. This is kind of an in-between piston. It is right in the middle of the oil rails. So these actually both work. This has a large gap. Sometimes that'll scare people. What you're actually looking for is when you put this around does it stay flat like this if the answer is yes you can use this the gap does not matter whatsoever as long as there's a gap there and this ring just needs to sit flat sits flat all the way around it's good to use if you have any questions or comments or there's a how-to video you'd like to see just hit us up on facebook at facebook.com slash pro pistons. We'll see you next time.